Hi, I'm going to try a beer in the Belgian Strong Air Ale category called a Belgian Blonde Ale. Uh, and I had tried one the other night out at a restaurant, uh, the Freestyle um, Belgian Blonde. Um, and I was a little disappointed in the flavor. I felt like it was really lacking um, the characteristics that I've come to appreciate in Belgian ales. Um, so we're going to give this one a try. This is actually listed as a commercial example. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have the sound phlegm in it, but it looks like aflagem to me, um, but that's probably very American pronunciation. But it's a blonde ale um, touting a double fermentation. Um, so a little bit of information about blonde ales. Um, it's a relatively recent development to further appeal to European Pilsner drinkers, um, becoming more popular as it is widely marketed and distributed. It's similar in strength as a double, similar character as a Belgian golden ale, uh, or a triple, though a bit sweeter and not quite as bitter. Um, often has an almost lager-like character which gives it a cleaner profile in comparison to the other styles. Belgians use the term blonde, no E, while French spell it blonde with an E. Most commercial examples are between 6.5 and 7% alcohol by volume. And many Trappist table bills, beers, uh, singles or engels are called blonde, but these are not representative of the style, so it's a little bit different. So we're expecting something different out of uh, this Belgian blonde that may not be what we're what uh, we've come to appreciate in standards. So I'm very curious to know um, if I misunderstood the style the other night um, when I said that the freestyle uh, Belgian one was off style or not. So let's find out. I was looking to see if there was um, yeast in the bottom, but I do not think that there is. I was curious because of the double fermentation uh, that, it's, it, that it had listed. So aroma-wise, spicy, um, kind of clove-like. It kind of has an alcohol scent and a light sweetness. Um, clove spice, alcohol, slight sweet, slightly sweet. Can't even read my chicken scratch there. Um, so as far as aroma, or excuse me, as appearance goes, um, it's definitely blonde, uh, and it's um, pretty see-through, although it is a little bit hazy, um, but I expected that based on the double, double fermentation label on the uh, bottle. Um, so, uh, a little hazy. It looks like it's very well carbonated. It's got a lot of bubbles. It did pour with a little bit of a head, which it has retained a little bit of, um, which I also think is characteristic for this particular style. It says, creamy, white to off-white head, good head retention with Belgian lace. So, Belgian lacing is when the head kind of follows it down the glass rather than um, staying on top of the beer. Um, so, hopefully we'll see that after I take a couple of drinks. Yeah, this is, um, very carbonated, um, but as far as flavor goes, um, it's incredibly smooth, and, um, it does have a very light, um, flavor to it. I can tell, uh, and I understand, I read it in here that it has an almost lager-like character. Um, so the, all of the spicing, the sweet honeyness, it's just very subtle. Um, and, um, but it still finishes with a clove, um, spiciness kind of that we expect out of a Belgian ale. Um, This is a good example of lacing. So the um, the head is left on the glass in what they call um, a lacing um, cat uh, lacing um, shape, whatever they want to call it, characteristic. Uh, and this also tells you whether or not your beer glass is correctly clean. Is that Belgian ale should at least like this? Um, so we see that is appropriate. Um, so when I'm drinking this. 
um, I feel like I'm right on the um, divide between um, what I expect out of a lager and what I expect out of um, a Belgian ale. Um, so I still get that clovey sweetness. As a matter of fact, I have a real strong clove aftertaste um, and a honey-like sweetness. Um, but it's so subtle and soft. Um, I feel like if I maybe if I wouldn't have read that in advance. I wouldn't necessarily recognize that spiciness. Um, as far as mouthfeel goes, um, it's a pretty full beer. Um, you know, it has, it definitely has a mouthfeel to it, and, um, part of that is attributed to the, the haze that we were, that I showed you in the glass. Um, so there's a lot of, um, of substance to this beer. Um, it is really heavy carb heavily carbonated. Sometimes it's even hard to take a drink and swallow it um, because it's carbonated so strongly. Um, and so um, I'm curious why it's so strongly carbonated. Maybe that's that double fermentation. Um, it says medium high to high carbonation can give mouth feeling bubbly sensation. So I guess that's appropriate for this particular style. Um, so very interesting. Medium body, um, light to moderate alcohol warmth, but smooth and can be somewhat creamy. I think creamy is a good description um, for this style. That incredible carbonation like that like makes it incredibly hard to drink this beer. I mean, you can't. I've I've had a couple of swallows where I was trying to swallow beer and it was foaming up. Um, so I'm not sure why that's um, something that that they've been going for in this style but interesting to come by so overall impression this is a good beer I think for um, American lager drinkers traditional um, American style beers this is a great way to break into an international beer or to a new a new style of beer um, because the flavors are so similar um, to American lagers but it it does get you kind of ready for what Belgian ales are going to offer um, so all uh, overall a very good beer super freaking carbonated. Um, if you've tried this before, share with me your comments down below. If you have a beer lover, share this comment, or excuse me, share this video with them. I would like to hear what other people have to say. Um, if you decided to try this beer because you saw this video, also please share down below. I would like to hear your comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.